Hi guys, welcome to Monitoring and Evaluation Made Simple. I'm your host, Coach Alexander. I'm so glad that you joined me today. We're going to be looking at a very interesting topic, integrating your M&D framework in an online M&D software. Okay, maybe that can be a mouthful for you, but simply what I'm saying here is how do you make your M&D framework get into the M&D software that you're using for your organization. So people call it different things. Others call it a deep database. Others call it an M&D system. But I'm simply talking about the software working hand in hand with the framework which you've already developed. So if you're here for the very first time, I'm Coach Alexander. I've been here for a very long time. I've been doing this for 10 years now. I have a wealth of experience and I'm better able to help you with any of your needs okay there are those ebooks and i know many of you have been writing to me complaining that um, you are not able to download them but please if you face any challenges write to me i'll be able to give you a link that you can use to download these uh, uh, files but also i want to urge many of my fans that you know as you write to me if I don't respond to your emails, it could be that I've not even seen your email or it hasn't even hit my inbox. So you can still try to resend it and then I can be able to help you achieve your goals. There's this wonderful course, How to Set Up a Monitoring and Evaluation System. Step by step, please enroll in this course. It's a very good course. And because this is a long video, there are some timestamps in the description below. Okay, so I want you to take full advantage of the timestamps so that you can be able to navigate your way through the video without having to watch each and every part. If you don't have time, just go to the part which interests you the most. So without wasting more time, let's get straight into action. Okay, so the M&D framework, in case you don't know what it is, it is simply that which describes a summary of how the M&D system works in your organization, okay? So usually, this is what you're given. This is the template. This is an example, okay, of an M&D framework. If you didn't watch the previous video, please do so right now. It explains in detail what this M&D framework is, okay? So there are quite a number of differences uh, that you see. This M&D framework, if you compare it to a log frame, they are totally different, but similar. This is a populated M&D framework that you see in front of you. Okay, I talked about this in the previous video, but in case you are just seeing this for the first time, I would urge you to watch the previous video. Okay, so what are we really talking about here? We are saying that imagine you could actually, instead of just having this M&D framework, the way it is, telling you who's responsible for what, what data you require to collect and how often you do it, instead of just having it on paper or in a Word document or in a PowerPoint presentation, you can actually have this fully operationalized on a system, an online system, an online database, uh, simply put an M&D software that is operational, okay? Now, I remember I talked about this some months ago, and I'm happy to talk about it again. If you've not heard of KPI Lens, this is what I'm going to be talking about. How do you use the KPI Lens M&D software to actually make this M&D framework work for you, okay? So please don't go away. Watch this video from start to finish because right now I want to get into the K KPI Lens website portal to show you exactly how this is done. Okay, so now I may not be able to finish this video, it's video because it may be long, but I'll do this in phases. So this video will just give you some kind of introduction. The next phase will actually give you the nitty gritties of how this is done. Okay, so just give me a few seconds, we get into the KPI Lens M&D software. Welcome back. 
I hope I didn't take long while you were waiting for me to, you know. Anyway, I've been editing this video, so obviously it didn't take long. So if you look on, on the page in front of you, I'm actually on Google and I typed KPI Lens. All right, so for those of you who don't know KPI Lens, they are a software M&D company based in Ghana. All right, so now what you do is after you've typed this on Google, you just go to their website really. And you, you actually, it's, it's quite amazing because they have quite a number of things to offer to an individual or an organization in terms of coming up with a, an M and D platform that works for you. So now look at this. What the one, one thing I like about them is that you can actually request for a demo, okay, and come up with these amazing reports using the the software that they have to offer, okay. I already have an account with these guys, okay? But in, in, in and I'm going to show you the the back end, but I just thought maybe because some of you are here for the first time. So I just thought maybe you could even appreciate what they are actually doing. There's data collection, okay, which is really important. So they offer secure data collection, mobile surveys. They also and this is what we're going to be talking about in a few minutes, the M&D framework, you see, perfect. Multiple monitoring frameworks, indicator tracking tables, target versus actual, you can actually do that on this platform. Reporting, okay. And yeah, basically that's it. And the reason why I like these guys is because they are simple in their approach to these matters. I don't like complicated things, all right? So let's sign into the, the, the account. So, oh, okay. So, okay, so now the, I, I easily signed in, but what normally happens is that a page will come in, will come which will give you provisions of you to enter account details so that you could sign in. But I was automatically signed in because I think I had signed in uh, some 20 minutes ago. Okay, so this is the workspace. And as you can see, I, I can log out if I want to. So there I am, Coach Alexander. So you you click, actually what happens is this, uh, because I've already done, done something, but uh, let's create a new workspace. Okay, so a workspace is simply how do I put it in simpler language? It's a it's an environment where you actually uh, put in your staff related to which are project specific. Okay, so for example, instead of um, if you've noticed, I already created one workspace. I, I called it M and D Made Simple, but in practice, the workspace could be project. Uh, oriented. So if you have multiple projects in your organization, you can actually name that workspace based on the project that you're implementing. So you can, let's name it as food security project. Okay. If you don't want to name it project, it can be a program. And then you give a, 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 a brief description just here. So you create that workspace. So in this food security project, okay. So now here is the thing. And now what, what you could have done actually, instead of saying project, you could have said program because a, prog a program contains multiple projects. Okay, but let's leave it like that. So in, the, in this uh, project, in this workspace, now you can you can address, list down all the projects that you actually implement. So you just come to this button, you click there, and then let's say this food security project is a project, a food security project for for South for maybe. Uh, let's okay. Let's let's say Southern Africa for Southern Africa. 
Okay, so this is just an example, guys. I hope you, you don't get offended if I'm using Southern Africa. I could have used, or we can even say Eastern and Southern Africa if we want to. Okay, it's just an example. So food security for is food security project for East and Southern Africa. So now, if you look at, if you come down here, it's asking you whether you want, which type of monitoring framework do you want to develop for this project? So you can choose, is it the logical framework? Is it the theory of change? All right, so you can, I think I'm comfortable choosing the logical framework and you click there. So it's been created, okay? So now, I already started something and that's why they're saying continue from where you left off, okay? So what you can do is, I'll say begin from afresh, all right? Okay, so now, it gives provisions for you to create a form. A form is the data collection sheet that you use. It gives provision to create now what we are calling the M&D framework for this project. Okay, so creating your M&D framework, you simply click there and you need to give the name, uh, the name of the, the framework that you are, you are creating. So I'm pretty sure that because this is a food security project for Eastern and Southern Africa, you simply just copy there. You simply, I don't think anything changes in most cases. It's just the same thing. So you just copy there. And then you simply save it. Okay. So it has been created. All right. So now. This is the M&D framework for the food security project for Eastern and Southern Africa. So now in every framework, you are going to have the overall goal, the indicators, the outcome, outputs, and inputs. Okay. So when you look at a goal, what is a goal? It's simply what you want to achieve over the years. Okay. So you simply click there and mention what goal you want to achieve. So like in the food security project, your ultimate goal is to ensure that poverty levels are reduced. Okay, so that's your goal. So reduction, reduction in poverty levels of the rural poor. Okay, I hope I'm not boring you. I, I'll try as much as possible to keep this interesting, but I think it's important that I show you what is happening here. So you can see already reduction in poverty levels of the rural poor. This is the ultimate goal, the overall goal that you want to see. And then, what are the indicators for this goal? Now, I'm going to ask you, what is an indicator? Okay, so an indicator is the actual variable that you use to measure your goal. You want to know whether indeed so there has been progress or not in the achievement of your goal. So if you are going to measure poverty levels, Poverty, according to usually when you go to the UN, United Nations website or Sustainable Development Goals, they are usually talking about percentage of people living on less than $1 a day. So that's what you can include. You can say the indicator name is percentage of people living on less than one dollar a day okay and then you can decide to just describe what this actually means but i won't do it here
So now, if you look at this indicator, is it a quantitative indicator or a qualitative indicator? So for those of you who've not really done statistics, a quantitative indicator is one that's easily measurable, okay? But a qualitative indicator is one you don't, that's not easily measurable. I'll give you an example. You cannot measure how happy a person is. Can you attach a number to somebody's happiness? You can't, not so. So a quantitative indicator is one that's easily measured and you can actually attach a number. So in this particular case, you can. So this is a quantitative indicator. But if you were doing a qualitative indicator, it would be something different. All right, so frequency. How often will you be measuring this indicator? So I, I got a question uh, from one of my students. They were asking on how often do you actually collect certain data? So data collection really depends on a number of things. But in this particular case, I want to mention that change, if you are going to notice a change in the, the percentage of people living on less than a dollar a day, it's going to take some time. And because it takes a lot of time, the frequency should be yearly, all right, for such a high-level indicator. And because this indicator actually is attached to the, the goal, it has to be yearly. I hope I'm not confusing you guys. So if you look at, I should have been able to save this content, but it wants me to add more content. So let's say you did a baseline. Okay, so let's say your baseline, and when I say baseline, it's the current situation. What is the current percentage levels of people living in poverty? Okay, so let's say just for argument's sake, the percentage is 20%. Okay, so that becomes your baseline. And because you are starting this project in 2021, that becomes your baseline date. So you are able to save that. And now the indicator for the goal has been created. So now, if it comes now down, if we move down, you look at the outcome, the outputs and inputs, it also has the same thing. So let, let's just, I'll just finish this, then I'll show you a completed thing that I did a few days ago. So for you to achieve percentage of people, if you want to see people living in poverty reduce, there are certain interventions you need to take have in place, which become the output. So let's say, for you to achieve, okay, no, actually, this is not the output, is it? It's actually the outcome, yeah. So the outcome, we are simply, it's simply below, now it's below the, the goal. So if you want people to be free from poverty, income levels have to increase. So here you can say, percentage, or you can say actually amount of income earned in USD. So now the question is, what type of outcome is this? This is a short-term outcome because it's definitely something you can be monitoring even monthly or quarterly. Okay, so we save it there. All right, so now for this outcome, you need to have indicators, okay? So you can still have the same uh, income level. You can simply say income levels 
in USD. Then you can provide the baseline. So like I earlier mentioned, the baseline is the current situation in the communities. So what is the current level of income among the beneficiaries? So it could be that the current income levels could be even less than a dollar per day. So we can say 0 0.5 dollars a day. Okay, and then of course that baseline we can put it today. Is this a quantitative? Yes. And how often will you be collecting? This could be monthly. Okay, so then you save it. So now, as you can see, you do the same thing for all the for all the other indicators. You do the, exactly the same thing that I've showed you. So now, let me show you what I've done, what I've completed, and I'm going to go to my workspace, which is the, this actual workspace, and I'm going to click there just to show you what I did as I was working with uh, this uh, wonderful software. So now when I go to the one I created, this is now a totally completed um, monitoring and evaluation framework that I've created. So it's showing, first of all, as you can see, it's clearly indicated poverty reduction project of the rural poor 2021 to 2023. So I even give a description. The Rural Poverty Reduction Project is a joint funded project by the Dutch government and USAID. The project targets a total of 400,000 farmers in East Africa. The donor support rendered is $1 million. So for the goal, the goal is to reduce the poverty levels and improve living conditions of the rural poor. And then I even give a description. The goal at the end of the project is to reduce people living in poverty by 15%. Subsequently, income levels of the rural poor should improve to, at, to a level where they can afford to eat three meals a day. So for this goal, there are different indicators, okay? So we are looking at, so now get this clearly from me that um, the reason why I have, you might see that there are a lot of goal indicators, impact indicators, but normally you just need two. But I just wanted to show you that um, the possibilities are endless. You can keep on adding uh, and help and basically these indicators just are, are there to help you um, measure what you're achieving so in this particular case the first indicator is looking at the percentage of people living on less than one dollar a day so this is 70 percent is the baseline average income levels of farmers in um yeah, average income levels of farmers in United States dollars. Okay, so what this is saying is that out of the 400,000 farmers, the baseline is $500, okay, which could be even per year. And if you try to do your maths, you'll find that it's a very low number of income generation trainings conducted with farmers. Okay, so now, now this is usually an output level indicator. So now, as you can see, you go to the outcome and similar to the other example I was giving you, it gives you the, it gives you the amount of income earned by farmers in USD. So in short, you are trying to get a outcome where farmers or community people, beneficiaries, have improved income levels. 
and then you list the indicators. So the beauty about this is that you can actually, if you click here, there's something I found interesting, which I just want to show to you. Uh, let me just be sure I'm doing the right thing sometimes because I'm also relatively new at this. Uh, is it data source? Okay, let me check. Mm, okay, so this is the data collection form I created for capturing these indicators. I'll show you that in the next video, but I just thought of showing you something. I hope it can come or maybe I'll do it some other time. Okay, this is what I was looking for, this. So when you click that icon, what happens is that it actually shows you, it actually shows you the linkages for the for this monitoring uh, this project how are, uh, are all these indicators interlinked okay so as you can see the ultimate goal and this is done automatically so the ultimate goal is to reduce the poverty levels and improve living conditions of the rural poor so you have the short term outcomes okay which which i I did list there and the long-term outcomes, but then you've got also the outputs. Some outputs have been shown. So for example, you've got percentage of people. Okay, so these are actually the indicators that are feeding into the whole overall goal. So you can see that actually it's able to show you this system is able to automatically generate some kind of an image just to show you how these indicators are feeding into the overall goal. Unfortunately, I hope I hope you are not able to I hope you are able to see this. Yeah, but uh, I would highly recommend that you get you gain access to this kind of software so that you can derive the maximum benefit and see for yourself how it can work for you. Okay, so that was, um, it was, it's very, it's really an amazing software, guys. So that was just a short uh, walkthrough of how you can make this software work for you in the implementation of your projects. However, tomorrow, or if it's not tomorrow, but in a few days time, I'm going to show you how now you can create the actual data collection forms that feed into the m and framework. And then after that video, I'm going to show you how now that data collection form has been used to collect data and generate a report. So I really hope you enjoyed this um, presentation. I've been your host, Coach Alexander and see you on the other side. Bye.